Here's Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there. I'm Diamond. I wonder if you've got any idea how much trouble a private detective can get into sometimes. Well, if you happen to have an office at Broadway and 53rd Street and the sign painted on your door reads Diamond Detective Agency... You're a setup for more trouble than a guy who goes bear hunting with a switch. I know, because I've got that office and the sign painted on the door. Sure, I've got a lot of idle time, and I use it up sitting around with my feet on the desk, waiting. But idle time can be as dangerous as a rattlesnake taking a sun bath. It's just a preliminary, the lull before the storm. You might wait an hour, a day, or maybe even a week. The quiet minutes keep multiplying, and sooner or later, things come to a head. Like one day last week. I'd been working on an extra long lull that didn't look like it was going anywhere. But in another part of town, a union meeting was taking place. It was going to keep me jumping around like a hungry flea at a dog show. I wanted to talk to you men. It's time that we did something. The Laborers' Assistance League is already functioning in a great number of factories in this city. And it's getting a stronger foothold all across the country. It continues to expand and gain power because it operates best where there's growing unrest and discontent within the factories. Now, they cause trouble and make it look like the union's not doing a good job for the worker. I know for a fact that four or five men can sit in on a union meeting and cause enough trouble to make it look like the whole union is wrong. Now, this union is getting along fine. He's really out to make trouble tonight. Yeah, if he keeps it up, this is going to be a tough union to crack. He won't keep it up. We're going to take care of it. Oh, what good will that do? His brother Phil will be in from California next week. We can shut his brother up, too. Are you sure he planned this thing with his brother? Yeah, when he gets in from California, he's bringing enough information to put us out of business. Well, that just gives us a week. He's talked too long. Let's break this meeting up. He's doing just that. Yeah? How do we know you're not talking through your hat? Well, now, look, you all know me. I gripe as much as the next guy. But I know for a fact that this league is not only working like that all over the country, but now it's beginning to move in on our factories and our unions. Yeah, but how do we know it's such a bad thing? There are a bunch of racketeers. And if you don't believe me, you come to this meeting next week, and I'll give you the proof you want. I don't know. I don't know. I well, I guess you're right. He promised them proof in a week, and that's what his brother gets in. Don't worry about it. When he gets the package, he won't be able to give anybody anything. Tom, bring hmm? in the rest of the dinner dishes, will you? Oh, sure, honey. Here, Mama, let me wash them. You talk to Tom for a minute. He's going to another meeting tonight. Oh, meetings, meetings. Always meetings. Oh, Tom, you're working too hard. No, don't worry, Mama. Phil will be home tomorrow. You help me. Oh, this is not a good business, Tom. The phone call, the threats. Come on, Tom, tell Mama. No, I, I, I can't, Mama. It'll all be over soon. Now, come on. We'll help Marge. I told you to go sit down and relax. <laughs> you sound like I was getting to be an old lady. You take the dish towel and we'll both do them, huh? <laughs> yeah. <honey. laughs> Your wife thinks I'm getting too old to wash dishes. Just you wait until she has a daughter-in-law. I think Mama's hinting. Oh. <laughs> Mama, shame on you. You give us the time to get the sun first, and there's plenty of time for a daughter-in-law. Well, I had you and Phil by the time I was 18. Marge is 22, and you've been married over a year now. <laughs> Mama, if you're so set on me raising a family, why don't you talk it over with Marge? Maybe you two can think up something. We'll let you know. Well, you do that, will you? <laughs> you better hurry up, Tom. You'll be late for the meeting. All right, Mama. Oh, I'll get it. No, 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 no. You say goodbye to your lovely wife. Why, thank you, Mama. You know, before your father died, I only had time to raise two screaming roughnecks, but now... I plan to be the grandmother of at least five more. <laughs> How about it, honey? Think we ought to make Mama happy? This is a conspiracy. <laughs> Who do you think's going to get left with all the work? Uh, maybe just three, then, huh? Silly. 
I love big families. Oh, I thought so. <laughs> Smooching when you ought to be on your way to the meeting. Can't a guy even smooch with his own wife? <laughs> Who was at the door, Mama? Oh, the mailman. He left our special delivery package for you, Tom. It's in the living room. For me? Yeah. Must be from Philip. It's from California. Oh, he must be sending some stuff on ahead. Well, why don't you open it, Mama? Maybe it's something for you, too. Oh, the women have dishes to wash. It's addressed to you. If you don't want to open it now, so leave it till tomorrow. Now, go on. Get out of my kitchen. You know you're sounding more like a mother-in-law every day. (laughs) Okay, I'll open it. You know, maybe it'd make you happier if you knew that Marge and I decided on five kids. Children are not kids. Kids are goats. Well, you never know. Tom, a John Wagner called you earlier. A Wagner? What do you want? He didn't say. Who's the package from? Oh, it's from Phil, all right. I know it's a surprise, because he sent it to me at the shop first, and then they sent it on here. wonder why I didn't get it at the shop. Well, what is it? Just a second, Mama. Wrapped up pretty tight. Boy, it's sure heavy. Diamond Detective Agency, murder soft, cheap. We eliminate the middleman. Oh. By George, that was a good one. Is this Lieutenant Levinson, the homicide kingpin? Yeah. Rick, get down here, will you? What's up, lover? Something pretty nasty. Well, tell Otis to stop leaving his bubble gum under the seats. Well, no kidding, Rick. This is something that you ought to know about. Well, stop sounding like an auctioneer at a mortuary and tell me what it is. You know the Waxmans? Mama Waxman? Yeah. Sure, I had dinner over there last week. Took Helen. What's happened, Walt? Last night, someone sent Tom Waxman a box with a bomb in it. What? I knew you were a friend of the family, and I've got to talk with you. Come down here, will you? You know it. I closed the office and grabbed a cab for Walt's precinct. All the way over, I kept thinking about Mama Waxman and her two sons. I'd known the whole family when I used to be on the force. Tom, who used to sing first tenor at the synagogue, had gotten hit in the throat with a baseball. And Catter Weinberg asked me to take over for him, so I sang that day in Tom's place. Mama Waxman heard me and asked me over later for the best dinner I'd ever eaten. We've been friends ever since. The cab dropped me off at the station, and I went in fast. Sergeant Otis was sitting at his desk reading the police gazette. Hello, Otis. Stop panting. They're just pictures. Oh, it's the comic gum show. Go on in, Diamond. The lieutenant expects you. Well, thanks, Sergeant. Oh, by the way, when are you going to get a haircut? You're beginning to look like Rasputin with a Tony. Uh... Hello, Walt. Sit down. I got a real headache. How much damage did the bomb do? Plenty. Killed Tom and put his wife and mother in the hospital. Mama Waxman's pretty bad. Oh, that's awful. Any line on the killer? Yeah, that's why I got this headache. We're uh, holding Phil Waxman, Tom's brother. Holding Phil? Are you crazy? Those two kids were inseparable. Tom's wife said at the box the bomb came in was from Phil. She heard Tom say so before he opened it. Well, she could have been mistaken. Someone could have copied Phil's handwriting. The story's got more holes in it than a fishnet. The package was sent from California, Rick. That's where Phil was... He got in this morning, and we picked him up at the train. Uh, What does he say? I thought at first he was going to say plenty, but then some guy comes in and says that he's his lawyer. After the guy left, Phil shut up like a clam. He denies the crime, doesn't he? Oh, sure, but that's all. Can't get anything else out of him. Who was this guy who claimed to be his lawyer? I got it right here. Name is John Wagner. Ah, you check on him? Yeah, he's a lawyer, all right. We can't find an address on him. Moved his offices about three weeks ago. Can I uh, talk to Phil? Won't do you any good. But if you want to have Otis take you over to the tombs. I won't have to hold Otis's hand, will I? Oh, go on. Get out of here. There's somebody to see you, Waxman. All right, Diamond, you got five minutes. How are you going to keep track, Otis? On my fingers. Well, that'll only get you up to 13. I'll scream if I need you. Uh... How are you, Phil? You're in on a tough rap. Yeah. You want to tell me about it? I've told the police everything I'm going to. Who was the lawyer who came in to see you? Just a lawyer. John Wagner? Just a lawyer. Look, uh, what were you doing in California? Now, Phil, I know you didn't send that bomb. Why don't you open up and get yourself free? I've said all I'm going to say. Now, get out of here, Diamond. Oh, it's like that, huh? Yeah, it's like that. Oh, come on. Go on, get out. Okay, okay. But don't forget your mother. 
You don't want to let her down. I'm going over to the hospital and see her now. Hey, Otis, let me out of here. How's my big policeman? Why, Mama? Did you know that one of my wonderful sons is dead? Did you know that, Richard? Yes, Mama. Now, you take it easy or the doctor won't let me stay. They killed my Tom because what he said was the truth. And that's why they are bad. Because they don't let people tell the truth. Who, Mama? My boy, Phil, knows. He will tell everything about them. And then they will be arrested. Sure, Mama, but... Who does Phil know about? I just saw him and he won't tell me. Mama. I, I feel so sleepy. I, I, I'm tired. Mama. You'll have to leave now, Mr. Diamond. Is she a sleep nurse? Yes, we gave her an injection before you got here. Oh. Well, then may I see Mrs. Tom Waxman? For a minute, yes. She's in this next room. She isn't as serious as Mrs. Waxman, but she has to rest. I'll give you a minute with her. Marge? Yes? Who is it? Rick? Oh, oh. oh no, no, come on. You've got to help me out. I'm the guy that's supposed to make people laugh. I'm the cornball with a bad line of chatter, remember? I can't help it. Sorry, they they gave me something to make me sleep, and things don't make too much sense. Look, dear, I want to help Mama, and I want to help you, too. But the nurse will only let me stay a minute. The police are holding Phil. I just came from seeing him. Did he tell you anything? Nothing. I made a mistake and told the police that the bomb had arrived in a package from Phil. I didn't think... They can't believe Phil would ever do a thing like that. He was helping Tom. Mama said Phil knows who did it. He doesn't know. He just knows who's behind it. I'm pretty sure I know, too. Who, Marge? Tom's been making speeches against an organization that call themselves the Laborers' Assistance League. I've heard of them. King-size bunco game. Yeah. Phil's been in California. He joined the league and found out a lot of things about it. He used to write Tom once a week. Your time's up, Mr. Diamond. You'll have to leave. Uh, just a second. Marge, did Tom tell anybody what his brother was doing? I don't know. There was a man named John Wagner that called Tom all the time. John Wagner? He's a lawyer. Please, Mr. Diamond. Uh, did he tell any of the men who work in the shop with him? Yes, I think so. Mr. Diamond, I'll have to call the doctor. Please, nurse. This may mean another man's life. Marge, who did he tell? Well, I, I can only remember one person, Ralph Pryor. Pryor. Mama used to fix Tom and Ralph dinner after work sometimes, but he, he, he was Tom's closest friend. Okay, Marge. Now, you take it easy, and I'll see what I can do. Please, Rick, find the men who did this. Yes. Well, I'll try. All right, nurse. I shouldn't have let you stay this long. What would I have to do to get you to take care of me? Have an accident. Well, I'll see what I can come up with. Bye. I left the hospital and walked out on the street. One of those sidewalk photographers snapped my picture and handed me a card in the case I wanted to send him two bits for the print. I threw the card away and headed for the factory where Tom had been working. The superintendent took me down and introduced me to the new foreman of the shop. Yeah, pretty rough about Tom. That's an understatement. Tell me, when did you take over Tom's job as foreman? This morning. How long have you worked for this shop? About three years. Why, are you a cop? I might be. You know a guy named Ralph Pryor? Sure, that's him, right over there about that third third lead. Want me to call him over? No, I think I can make it under my own power. Hey, uh, you Ralph Pryor? Yeah. You knew Tom Waxman pretty well, didn't you? Yeah. Well, don't cry on the machinery. It'll rust. Who are you? What do you want? Name's Diamond. 
Let's say I'm a friend of the family. Well, good for you. What are you snooping for? I've got an erector set. I just love machinery. Well, don't get too close to this machine or it'll take your arm off. As long as it's not the one I count my money with. How long have you worked here? None of your business. Where were you during the war? Same answer. Well, thanks, Mr. Pryor. You've been grand. Hey, Foreman. Yeah? Did you talk to Pryor? Yeah, he's the quiet type. So how does the mail come in here? From the mail room. Ask a silly question. No, I mean, who brings it in? Well, no special one. Foreman usually sends someone after it. Do you remember a package coming here for Tom yesterday or the day before? No, if there'd been one, Tom would have seen it. He was the foreman then. Where can I find the mail room? Up the hall to head the stairs. Thanks. Sure is too bad about Tom. You said that. Say, didn't I know you all back in Little Rock, Arkansas? No. I'm from Malvern. I just thought I'd ask. I went up and talked to the mailroom clerk, and he was a little more help. There had been a package for Tom. He told me that he'd sent it down along with some other mail, but he couldn't remember who'd picked it up. I was beginning to get warm, and I knew it. So I slipped into a phone booth and put in a fast call to Lieutenant Levinson. Homicide, Sergeant Otis. Otis, let me talk with the lieutenant. Oh, it's you, Diamond. Why don't you stop playing like a detective? Why don't you buy the lieutenant a necktie for his birthday, a fuzzy green one? You think he'd like that? Sure, and if the clerk hasn't ever seen a fuzzy green one before, just show him your tongue. Now put the lieutenant on. Uh... Lieutenant Levinson. Walt, did you find out anything about that bomb? Oh, yeah, Rick. It was dynamite. Highest grade. But I don't see how it could come all the way from California through the mails without the caps blowing the whole thing up. Uh, neither do I. Do me a favor, will you? Pick up a Ralph Pryor. He works at the same shop that Tom Waxman did. What can I hold him on? Just picking him up. Pick him up for questioning. Since when do you need an excuse? Now, you wait a minute. If you know something about this I've case, just I'll... got a hunch. Pick the guy up, and I'll be down in a little while and tell you all about it. I hung up on Walt just as he was getting around to the words you could censor and headed back to the factory. I waited around outside for about ten minutes and then, sure enough, a prowl car pulled up and two boys in blue got out and went in. In a couple of minutes, they came back outside, only this time they had company. Ralph Pryor. I waited until they'd pulled away, then I hailed a cab and headed to the 5th Precinct myself. Oh, where have you been? Snooping, Walt. I just saw your boys pick up Pryor at the factory. Thanks. Now, would you kindly tell me what you wanted him picked up for? Oh, it's a long shot, Walt. I found out he knew what Tom's brother was doing in California. What was he doing? Getting some information on a racket that's been trying to muscle in on Tom's local union. In California? Yeah, they're operating all over the country. You've heard of them. Labor's Assistance League. Oh, those leeches. Well, I still don't see what this has got to do with Pryor. Well, I think that bomb was sent from the factory here in New York. I found out a little while ago that in order to get hold of that package, the killer would have to be working in Tom's shop. You think Pryor did it? I'll tell you better when I see if anyone comes down to get him out. Well? Well, what? Well, what are we going to do? Sit here and look at each other? Well, that's a pretty ghastly thought. How about a fast game of canasta? Oh, you know, it's a lousy two-handed game. Well, I'm just trying to help. We could play jacks, but twosies throw me. Yeah, what is it, Otis? Uh, the lawyer, John Wagner, is out here. He says he wants to see the guy we just picked up. Fast work? Ralph Pryor? Yeah. He says he represents some kind of laborer's assistance league or something. So the Pryor's a member. All right. Let him see him. Okay, Lieutenant. John Wagner, that lawyer who came in to see Phil Waxman this morning, is back again, Rick. It's time to see Pryor. Yeah? <laughs> well, what are you looking so smug about? Looks like the hunch is going to pay off. You mean this lawyer is tied in with the killing? Well, I'm not sure, but I think so. Tom Waxman was making speeches against the Assistance League. Now a lawyer from the League shows up to help the only guy who knew what Tom was up to and worked in the same shop with him. Now I suppose you want me to hold the lawyer. No, Walt, why? How do I know? That's what I asked you. What? Am I supposed to know everything? Lock him up if you want to. What for? He's not guilty. How do you know he's not guilty? Because you had me pick up Ralph Pryor. Well, let him go, too. Let him go where? With his lawyer. I thought you wanted me to lock up the lawyer. Well, that was your idea. What was? Locking up the lawyer. I don't want to lock up the lawyer. Well, let him go. He's not in. Pryor is. Well, let him go. Who? Phil Waxman. How did he get in here? I don't know. You put him in. Of course I put him in. Now, why should I let him out? I don't know. I ask you. Ask me what? Why you put him in. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Otis. Yellow Lieutenant. Empty the jails and throw this idiot out of my office. Thanks, Walt. Bye. I went out in the squad room and spotted the lawyer just as Otis started back into Walt's office with a glass of bicarbonate. He was a little guy, 
dressed neatly in a Hamburg, blue suit, and spats. I made sure that he was my man, and I went out in front of the precinct to wait. I hung around for about half an hour until he finally came out, and then I started the tale. He grabbed a cab, and so did I. We went across town, and I watched him as he got out and went into a big building on 38th Street. I went in after him. We rode the same elevator to the 8th floor. We both got out. I made like I was looking for a room number, and he went in the door with a sign on it reading Continental Shipping, offices in New York, California, and London. I got close to the door and could hear a phone being dialed. I'd have given my eye teeth, complete with the fillings, to have heard what the conversation was about. Yes, I just went down to see him. He'll be released in an hour. I've got him passage on the tramp steamer. When they release him, he'll meet me at a place I picked, and I'll give him the ticket. I'll tell him the police are up to something, and he'll have to get out of the country. Now, don't worry about that. He'll never get there. The captain of the ship is being paid to see that he doesn't. All right. Yes, everything is going as well as can be expected. Oh, one more thing. A friend of Waxman's, a private detective, is following me. One of our men took his picture coming out of the hospital after seeing Waxman's mother. Yes, well, don't worry about it. I can take care of him when the time comes. All right, goodbye. I waited until he came out of the building and the hunt was on again. I grabbed another cab and it took my last three bucks chasing him to a little waterfront dive on Canal Street. I followed him in and watched him sit down in a booth at the back of the room. I made like an unhealthy patron and took a table near the door where I could watch. An hour later, a guy walked in and headed for the lawyer's booth. He was Ralph Pryor. He talked with the lawyer for a minute, then took an envelope from him and got up. He went out and I went after him. If I was right, he was my killer. The lawyer could wait. Uh, Ralph, I want to talk to you. I thought I told you to stop snooping. Bad right here. Let's step in this alley. Oh, what? Get in the alley. Hey, hey. What do you think, you're shoving around? You're just full of questions. You know, mister, you're not so big that you can't end up with a busted head. Now, let me go. I guess you better understand something. Oh. Get the point? Oh, you dirty... You don't want to play, huh? Oh. Oh. Maybe you haven't guessed it, but I'm mad. I'm going to kick you from one end of this alley to the other until you tell me who sent that bomb to Tom Waxman. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. The state might slap my wrist, but I don't like losing good friends. Oh, my nose. You should see Mama Waxman. She looks a lot worse, but she's got a lot more troubles. She lost a son. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't take any more. Ah, sure you can. Sure. Just think about something else. Tom Waxman, maybe, or his wife and mother. Want to tell me? Okay. No. Please. Wait a minute. I, uh... All right, I did it. I did it. Leave me alone, will you? You picked up a dummy box sent from California to the factory and you planted the bomb in it. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because Brother Phil had evidence enough to smear the league? You know a lot, don't you? Sure, Tom was going to present the evidence in front of his union. And the league sent an empty box from California addressed with Phil's forged handwriting. I went up to the mailroom and picked up the box and put the bomb in it and sent it to Tom's house. You do it for the league? Yeah, I did it for them. Who's the boss of the league? Uh, well, I, I... Come on, come on. All right. It's... Oh. Now you'll never know. Wow. Mr. John Wagner, complete with Derringer. I hope you noticed the error of his ways, Mr. Diamond. He talked too much. You've got a funny way of keeping clients out of trouble. I'm glad you noticed. I'm going to do the same for you. Won't you need a retainer? No, this one's on the house, so to speak. I think you're going to get one anyway. That cop at the end of the alley with a riot gun doesn't look like he's hunting golfers. That is a very stale attempt at throwing me off guard. Anyone that would be stupid enough to try a worn-out stunt like that deserves to die. You'll make it easy for me. Okay, suit yourself. Fire when ready, Gridley. What do you think? <laughs> Thanks, Walt. You arrived in the nick. Nick pick. A big azunt. Why can't you get mixed up with a wife beating or something? The taxpayers are getting tired of seeing their streets cluttered up with a lot of bodies. Now, don't you yell at me. How did you find me? I knew something was up, so when Ralph Pryor was released, I tailed him. 
I saw you tailing Pryor. I saw the lawyer tailing you, so I tail the lawyer. Well, if you'd have had an eight-piece ban, you'd have had a parade. Oh, nuts. Oh, what's the matter, Walt? You, you'd have had to shoot him. He was going to kill me. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Well, what is it? I forgot to bring my bicarbonate along. Oh. Well, the wagon came and created Pryor and the lawyer off to the morgue. When we got back to the station, Walt put in a call to the feds and told them to check the uh, Labor's Assistance League in California and pick up the guys who sent the packages through the mails. Using the mails like that can be a tough rap. And three weeks later, the government closed in. They picked up the big wheel and threw the whole bunch away for 10 to 20. Tom's brother, Phil, was released, and he went in front of Tom's union and gave them the evidence he'd collected while he was with the league. Needless to say, the league wasn't represented that night or any night after that. About three weeks after Mama Waxman came home from the hospital, she invited me over for one of her famous dinners. I brought Helen, and her butler Francis came along to help with the serving. Oh, Mama, I'm stuffed. Well, Richard, you didn't finish up the cheesecake. Can't make it, honey. I can't move. Oh, the Helen's a good girl. She ate everything in front of her. You know what? You two should get married. <laughs> her appetite is the best argument against getting married I can think of. Keep working on him, Mama. <laughs> all right. Now, let's all go into the front room. If I know my big policeman, he still likes to stretch out on the couch. Huh? You are so right. <laughs> <sighs> Here, let me help you, Mama. Oh. Thank you, Richard. Uh, where's Francis? Oh, he's in making some coffee. Oh, he's been such a help. Before the accident, it was nothing to serve supper. You sit right here, honey. All right. Thank you. Oh, I won't have to eat another thing for a week. Here's the coffee, Mrs. Waxman. Uh, Francis, you must call me Mama, like the rest. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mama. Did you have enough to eat also, Francis? It was simply wonderful. You know, someday if Miss Asher doesn't mind, I'd like to stop by and, well, to swap recipes, as it were. Well, mm -hmm. I think that would be wonderful, Francis. Why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll give you some fine ones, Francis. Where's Phil tonight, Mama? He had to go to our union meeting. He's going to work in Tom's shop. He also asked me to thank you for singing at the funeral. Glad to do it, Mama. Richard, we always wondered where you learned to sing in Yiddish. Well, I used to pound a beat on the Lower East Side. Oh. Well, uh, would you do me a big favor, Richard? Sure, dear. I'm feeling a little sad about my boy tonight. Would you sing something for me? Uh, this song he liked you to sing. Oh, eh? I'm a little full of dinner, Mama. Please, oh, Ray. Oh, yes, uh, please, Mr. Diamond. Well, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Mimi, Mimi. A <clears throat> uh, Yiddish medal. Da a Yiddish boy. Pretty good for a shake, so, Mama. Oh, fine. Du schöne Mädel, in es darf sein, What does it mean? Don't tell her, Mama. <laughs> Weil in der Teure ist geschwiben, in es Ohr ist du verblieben. A Yiddish Mädel, da a Yiddish boy. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful, Richard. You know, you would make a fine canter. Well, thank you, Mama. How did you like it, Francis? Ha! As a husband, Mr. Kitten, this was it. What? Francis. What did he say, Mama? <laughs> he said, as a canter, you would make a fine dishwasher. <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Hey, Eddie. Eddie, you mind if I butt in for a minute? Not at all, Dick. Thanks. I just wanted to tell the people that next week our show is going to be on at a different time and a different day. The day will be Saturdays instead of Sundays. And would you please look in your newspapers for the time? Thanks, Dick. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Diamond will come to you next Saturday at a new time. Be sure to check your newspaper for the hour. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.